All right, man. You know what it is. It's Friday. Another edition of the Mr. Peter Parker podcast, episode five. Clap. Tito's in the building. Bang, 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 bang. Still recovering from St. Patty's Day, I, I would figure. Oh yeah, man. It's been a uh, it's been a rough couple of days. Powers has been hitting. I'm still going. Come here. <laughs> Fuck it. We're here. Happy to be here, though. Sipping the Corona on a Friday. I got iced teas on deck. We're ready. We got Bodega Bams going to join us today on the podcast, talking about his new album, El Camino, what he's got going on with the acting. And he's like a New York staple uh, Harlem guy who's been around since the ASAP mob days and messed with a lot of people in the city. And I'm excited to talk to him. I never met him before, but I've been a fan for like the better part of 10 years. So very, very cool stuff. Also today, Tito, um, NCAA tournament starts. Uh, I tried to fill out a bracket, right? So check this out. My mother-in-law calls me from work. She's like, yep. you're, you're a basketball expert. I need help. I was like, oh yeah? With, with, with the Sweet 16? What are we doing? Like, feel the 64? I'm like, all right. I, Right. She's got the NIT tournament, doesn't she? Right, she's yeah. trying to do the women's tournament. I was like, it's not the same. It's I know UConn, you know, other than so right. she runs to, so run through the teams. I'll pick them. So yeah. I, I kind of know who's good and who's bad to an extent, but really at the end of it, I think Gonzaga is going to take the whole thing. Uh, shout out to Jalen Suggs. He's from uh, St. Paul. Played ball down the street at Minnehaha Academy. I had him on the show. The first time I saw his highlights on Instagram, I was like, oh, that oh, he's going to the league. Like the way he kind of the shit he does on the air, he's fantastic. Nice. He's nice. So shout to and it's a white boy on his team that can shoot really good. Looks like Leitner. Like he got the hair well, flying. Gonzaga, who Barry Barry Obama picked uh, Gonzaga. I believe so, that. He, yo, I believe the, that. He's always pretty on on top on top of it. So. No, I'd like to see Suggs get um, drafted by the Wolves. Right now, they've been playing terrible. But as of recently, last night, um, Anthony Edwards have forty. Big Cat have 40, 40, the, the Jay-Z 40, 40 club thing. But Anthony right. Edwards has really stepped it up since they had the new coach. And I'd like to see uh, Jalen Suggs get drafted by the Wolves, stay home, and, and see if they could salvage this franchise. But shout out to the Wolves picking up uh, uh, last couple of um, games. It's the Mr. Peter Parker podcast. Heavy hitters, we're here. Excited about Bodega Bams. Also, very excited, Tito, about Raekwon Ghostface Saturday night versus. This is cool, man. Yeah, it should be a good, uh, good, good take. I think that uh, you know those two dudes have got a lot of records together. I don't know how much of a first it's going to be. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, it might right. Like, uh, give them their flowers while they're here, type of deal. It's but a performance. We get to watch them on Instagram. You know what I mean? Like, one hundred percent. I mean, you know, it was nice to see uh, them get together and do that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I'm, I'm and cool actually, I don't know. If I saw um, Ghost posted a video the other day. He was on the phone with Ray. And there was some heavy shit talking going back and forth. I dig so that. You never, you, you never know how it's going to go. I think it I might, saw them might. in Cleveland at the House of Blues when they did the 20th anniversary of Cuban Link. And their chemistry is really cool. And you can see the contrast between the two guys and who they are. I've interviewed both of them. They're very different people. Um, I'm excited, though. It's going to be very, very cool. I remember when Versus first started right around the time we were really all really quarantined. Like we couldn't go outside. We couldn't really do anything. And, and, and like the whole city was shut down. Everything was shut fucking down, dog. It's different now. People are back up moving around. How about this? I got a question for you. Okay. Cuban Link or Iron Man? Talking about albums here. If you had to choose, you go Cuban Link or Iron Man? Because they're really collaborative efforts between the both of them. What do you think? I'm a Cuban Link fan myself. Me too. That. That's my shit. But Iron Man is good. Iron Man is definitely, but Cuban Link was, I think, really like because it was the yeah. first time they really came out of their shell with them two together. Big time, stunted and, and, on that. And I thought that that set the standard for albums after that. You know what I mean? Like, and all so. the coke rap and all the drug rap that came after that took a piece of Cuban Link with them moving forward. Yeah. Everybody from Jay-Z across the board, everybody was influenced by that. All right. How about this Cuban Link or Supreme clientele? I'm still going with Cuban Link. Me too. But Supreme clientele is great. And it's the song. Oh, yeah, no. Great songs on there. Some of his yeah. best songs on there. 100%. 100%. Another piece of content I'm looking forward to consuming. Shots, my man, Nori. Shout out to DJ EFN, Miami guys, 
Um, we're going to have EFN on the podcast coming up. We're going to talk to him about doing this drink champs and all the guests they've had on. We, I talked to him, so we're working on that right now. Um, they have DJ Drama was on. and I saw that. Right. It came out Thursday audio-wise, but the video's coming soon. They kind of leak it out. It's on Revolt. Uh, they got a great deal for them. It, amazing. But but what some, it, about his comment? Dude, this, listen, I'm going to touch on this. Him saying he's the best mixtape DJ ever. I don't know. He's a top fiver for me, but you got to talk about Kid Capri. You got to talk about Clue. You got to talk about uh, Green Lantern. Uh, for, his, I mean, for his era, he was number one. Of course, that's, for his that's, era. That's my, that's my take on it. I don't think you can compare him, um, you know, especially the guys like Tony Touch who came out and changed the game with the 50 MCs and doing all that type of stuff. I oh, think yeah. it's tough say that you're actually number one um but that being said for his era he definitely makes hold, hold on a second hold on hold on a second yo i'm recording man. Wow. Okay. no but i'm looking forward to watching the drink champs there's a lot of other things on there they kind of nori kind of takes a jab talking about you know drake smashed his girl and this other like crazy wild talk I, I like where they're going with drink champs. I mean, shout to drama. It's my man. He's a legend. He's a very important part of the culture. Uh, one of the greatest of all time, regardless if he's the best or not. He's one of the greatest of all time. But shout out to my okay. favorites, though. Uh, Green Lantern, definitely. Uh, yep. Man, uh, K Slay was incredible in his prime. Uh, you're talking about guys like Kid Capri, who, like, you know, Ron G set things off with the R&B blends. Um, yep. Clinton Sparks made great tapes that really inspired me to make mixtapes. You know, Clue, some, and Clue all, come on, it's the homie, man. Definitely, yeah, um, amazing. All man, those, amazing. all those DJs, Tony Touch, that 50 MCs was crazy. Like, that's what Brandon I'm saying. It's a game changer. Doop, you know, some great tapes, man. So, I look, looking forward to that. They kind of reignite some talk with the Drake and the uh, Quentin Miller stuff, with the, you know, and, and, and drama's involvement with that whole thing. Nori definitely doing his thing, man. Also, shout to Drake. We were talking about those records last week. They came in one, two, and three on Billboard. Did like the equivalent of nine hundred and seventy thousand units off a three-song EP. Shit it on the whole game again. I'm playing fair, bro. It's not. It's not even fair. It's you unbelievable. I mean? Okay, how about this? Who wins in a versus? Hove or Drake? I mean, I gotta go with Hove personally. Like that's my, like that's. Who I, I think ride. so. I think so. Like I mean, I think that the younger generation might say some different shit, but I don't know. I, I I'm 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 a I'm riding with Hove. I'm a I shot to Hove regardless. He got his whole family winning Grammys. Made hun made six hundred million dollars in two weeks off Ace of Spades and title. It's a win for the culture. Shot to Hove. So did you see the picture of Blue Ivy? Yeah, let's talk about the crown. You put this on. Like, I see her sipping out of the Grammy, but that's that was Big's crown? Well, that's what they're saying. So supposedly this the crown sold a couple years ago at Sotheby's for $600,000. Uh, and it was anonymous who the sale was. And they posted the picture of Blue sipping out of the Grammy. Right with what looks like Big's crown. From so, the I photo mean, shoot, from the notorious from, shoot with the, with the yeah, the of course. Thing and all that, like, dope picture of super flex, but. Super I mean, flex. I mean, that's gotta be the crown. I can't, you it's can't. It's gotta be, but that's the super subtle flex that Hove is on at the stage of the game where he buys it anonymously, anonymously where he could have done it as Jay-Z bought it, but he does it. Of course anonymous 600 racks and then puts it on his daughter after she wins her second grand. come on bro okay real talk though the uh, kanye 6.6 .6 billion dollar language they were speaking earlier this week i was a little like how did this happen like this dude's 50 like, like super random like oh, all of a sudden he's, he's a multi-billionaire you know what but i mean I not just, even multi like two or three is multi six points that's seven billion Dude, it, it, it came out in Forbes. It had actually was about yeah 1.8 billion, and and to me that's dope. That's like all right, that's realistic numbers. I think the 6.6 is like six is like a projected number when you're talking about where he's gonna go with the Yeezy brand and where he's at, and realistically what it's worth over a certain amount of time. Yeah, potentially. Right now, 1.8 billion, ridiculous. You can see the why he chose Adidas over Nike. 
to be able to make these kind of bigger moves and make this kind of money. It, it's yeah, he wouldn't, the, he wouldn't have made the same money with Mike. No, no absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, but dude, regardless, uh, one of the uh, one of the greatest of all time when, when it comes to like the overall game, you know what I mean? I, when I got a chance to talk to Kanye in person uh, in Wyoming, when I went to the thing out there uh, when they had the listening session. And I think I yep. told you this personally, Tito, I was in the barn shit with them all like Chris Rock, right. everybody. Right. Afterwards, went to this bar and I was there. My man Noah Shear introduced me to Kanye, and as Kanye is coming towards me, I mean the phone's off, it's dead, it's like two o'clock in the morning. We're drinking Miller High Life's with Dame Dash at the bar. This is real. Right. Kanye is coming towards me, and I'm like, "Don't be a pussy. Say how you feel, bro. Say it right. real. Like, don't flake. Don't be." And he comes to me, and I'm like, "Listen, I'm like, great to meet you." not really feeling the stuff you've been saying on TV as of recently. This is like two or three years ago. He was just wilding, and I just expressed myself that I was like, yo, I, I wasn't a fan of what you said about the whole slavery as an option. It's just the way he was wilding at the time on TMZ and stuff like that. And I told, I him, to his, I told him to his face, I was like, nah, I wasn't feeling that. It was a very empowering moment because I think that now as a fan, I can move forward and be like, hey, you know, he did good, he did this. But when I saw him, Right. I told him how I felt and we dapped it up and I'm like, oh, I'm a fan of you. I wish you the best moving forward. Yada, yada. He's an incredibly cool guy. Really laid back. He could have been medicated. It was cool. <laughs> it was cool. But I, now I'm it's sure a great experience. I mean, he was, so, he was happy, man. People were there listening to his some, album. Yeezy's out of it, right? Of course. I got, some, I got him. I got the Yeezys. I got a right. million stories. You know what I mean? It's all yeah. positive. It's all. It's it's really. It's it's really really all good. Coming up though, we got to check in with Poppy himself. Uh, Bodega Bams is gonna be here talking about what's going on in the city. What's up with him? His new album, El Camino. Um, we got to touch on it and see if he's listened to this new Benny the Butcher Harry Fraud project that I've been listening to all day today. Uh, super fire. Harry Fraud's been doing it. He got the project with Jim Jones. Yo, it, I feel like this shit is. Benny's doing it. Big shot to Benny. That thing. That's is, my plan. Uh, I'm gonna get into that, and I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll check back in next week and uh, highlight some joints about that. Most definitely, man. I think our guest about to check in. Yeah, buddy. On a special Friday edition of the Mr. Peter Parker podcast, got my guy Tito Jackson in the building. What's happening, bro? Peace, peace. What up? Also joining us today. Where, where are you located, sir? Are you in New York City right now? Yes, sir. Okay, Bodega Bams, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause. This is big. Pop, pop, this is big. Yo, welcome, 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 man. Love. Yo, we we uh we're excited to have you on. You got this new project out right now. This El Camino is crazy. Thank um, you, man. Thank you. I've always been a big fan of your music. Uh, the lyricism, the passion that you put into what you're doing, Spanish Harlem guy. There's something different about uh New York guys and, and specifically Harlem rappers. Y'all are a rare breed of animal. It's, it's yeah. something, something different, you know what I mean? There's a certain, and now look, recently I was just watching um, Juice for the first time in like 10 years. And all that Harlem stuff from back then and the Rodimez boys, I'm like, okay, this is this is the Tam boys. I know these guys, you know I, mean? I know these guys, man. Word, word, that's a fact. Rodimez, yeah, that, yeah, Rodimez and how he was running, he was running in the streets. Mm -hmm. Yo, Bishop, you know what oh, I'm God, like, God. I'm like that's oh, Bams and them. Quillis, old man Quillis, you know exactly. Crazy? There's no that used to be New York, man, and you know even the bodegas like how Juice depicted like it was a yeah. old Latino dude. Mm -hmm. It's not even like that no more. Like this, right, right? Very few Latinos in in the bodega still in New York. You know what I'm saying, but that's crazy, man. That's that was that was a piece right there. You know, Juice's monuments. Right. Well, yeah, buddy, when I when I look at you, I'm like, this is old New York, but in a new in a new persona with the new wave. Can you talk about the difference between you just touched on it? I wanted to ask you about this. The old New York that we all love, like the one we all know, but then the new New York coming after COVID, even where it's going right now, uh, what, oh. it's, it's totally different place. Am, I, am yeah. I wrong? Nah, nah, for sure. You know, but man, New York, I, I think. That's what makes New York so unique since, you know, for, since beginning of time, because we just constantly adapt to the times, right? Like we just yep. constantly change and 
get bigger and get more influential. Um, and that's what's going on right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as like, you know, this whole COVID shit, it, it, it's, it's kind of weird to see such a huge powerhouse like New York going to a frenzy. That shit was crazy. Like, mm-hmm. I, could, it, it's, I couldn't even explain it with words, bro, how the feeling it was like outside. Like, it was bugged out. Yeah, was um, but you know, um, music is always changing in New York. You know what I'm saying? Like right. we haven't had a we haven't had a distinct sound in New York since probably like the late '90s. You know what I'm saying? Like the mm-hmm. early 2000s. Like New York has just adapted and um, not copied, but stole other shit and made it their own. You know what I'm sure, saying? So sure, sure. Shit is always going to change, and that's why we always, you know, we always the premiere. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely, man. I was talking to enough this week, and I asked him about the kind of that pop smoke drill sound right now that's crazy in the city. You really stuck to your kind of like, I don't know, like true school ethics in a lot of ways where you make really original sounding shit, classic timeless sounding shit. Do you ever feel the urge to go do that drill shit? Do you ever feel like you want to dabble? Are you, are you happy in your lane? Nah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I'm happy. And um, because I just feel like a lot of shit be phases and a lot yep. of shit comes in seasons, sadly. Yep. And although it's, it's, it's incredible music and the movement, I don't see that being sufficient enough to be around for another five, 10 years. I just no. don't see it. You it's know what I'm saying? Hot, that's, it's hot. And, and that's, and that's, you know, that's the juggle of being an artist because, you know, it's like, do you stick to where you're good at? Do you stick to your pocket? Or do you try to go this sound, go this lane because it's accepted right now? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, you know, nine or 10 times, artists are going through that. Right. And I, I think it's, it's not even a, you see, with me, I can do that. I could do that. You like, can do whatever I'm, you I'm, want. I'm, That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm heavy on just being, being able to switch things up. Like my flows, my cadence, I'm really heavy on that. I just don't want to do that because again, I'm not going to do it as good as the niggas is doing it right now. The young you know guys, the young guys. I'm not even going to set it up. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like LeBron and, and Steph. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, right. if LeBron want to shoot all the time because Steph is shooting, he going to shoot, but he never going to shoot it as good. No. And, so, and let's, I'm let CJ have his moment, right? Like, he has this whoop thing. It's it's wonderful. I, but I see a lot of people doing the sound right now. And when I listen to El Camino, I, I didn't hear that. I heard more of, of the same, but really high quality. And some of these classic flips, I love the way you take the older records and breathe light. Tito was talking about the record you uh you got the video for right now. King, King. Um, yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, you, for sure. The way you flipped that that uh, Uptown Baby uh you know joint um that beat who did That's that classic. beat? My man John Boy Beats man, shout out to my man John Boy. He's one of the um he's one of the first producers that ever I ever worked with man. And you know that sound that you hear like me and John Boy. We started doing that shit like 13, 14 years ago. Like I remember right, the first right. flip I did, there was a song that Celia Cruz made, which is a, she's a huge salsa singer. Mm-hmm. She made called La Vida es un Carnaval. And we switched that. This is 15 years ago before I even yeah. had a shot at anything. So my right. mind was already on this type of shit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. I knew that yo, nobody really tapped into this like that. Like, you know, you hear flips and shit from salsa, but it's an actual Latino flipping it, an right. actual American rapper flipping it. So I knew when I when I got my opportunity, I was gonna do this kind of sound because I knew that nobody was doing it. And I never forget, bro, like, like 12, 13 years ago, I'm talking about the same song. Mm-hmm. And this is, you know, I'm this is I'm behind the scenes. I'm just running around with niggas. Sure. I remember I had first met Nipsey like 13 years ago. Right. First time he ever came to New York. Amazing. I was cool yeah, with, yeah. Right. And I remember he heard this record and I was in my man, there's a dude named um, John Shipes. Um, yeah, I know John is a man, the cinematic, right. of course. So we was in his crib, me, Nip, Shipes, and we playing this record. And nigga, Nip looked at me like, yo bro, this right here, this what you gotta do, bro. This what you gotta do, stay on this shit, cause niggas wanna hear that. But yeah, that yeah. was, you know, that was an affirmation, you know, and then years later I had to mold it, but right. I knew that I knew what I was on, bro. I knew this lane that I was but on. But that's smart though. And you think of Nipsey's first kind of big tune that was breaking on radio was the hustle in the house with the little uh crisscross shit. He flipped it. 
and he oh. and we had that conversation. And this is this is this is pre that nigga. This yeah, is of course. Nigga, yeah, yeah. Nigga, I met Nip. I met Nip when he had bullets ain't got no names. That's his like first mixtape. That, that's well, when early, I met Nip. Re- real early, early Nip. Nip. You yeah, know what I'm saying course. like so. But that was a conversation like, yo, bands, this shit right here? Nah, nah, bro, you gotta, you know what I'm saying? So Smart, it's something man. that I take pride in, you know what I mean? Yo, and you were out there early. Uh, let's bring it back to that for a second. When you talk about 10, 15 years ago, running around with guys like ASAP Yams in the beginning of this New York resurgence. I was there. I remember shot to my man Dro over at Def Jam. He played me the Purple Swag video with ASAP Rocky when it had 15,000 views on it. And, and I'm talking about Crazy. early. And, and to see what you guys have created and watch everybody just take, 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 t- again from New York. It's... It's pretty impressive shit, man. Man, I was with I was with them. I was I was with them physically. I was with them when they dropped Peso. I was with him right when Rocky Ooh. put right when Rocky put upload on the YouTube. Like nice. I was there. Like I was in that, you know what I'm saying? What we was saying? actually at another video shoot. And I remember niggas just I never forget. I remember nigga Rocky like mm. It was him and a whole bunch of other all of us and niggas is just watching that video peso and he about to press upload to upload that shit. And niggas is just like, nah, this gonna be this the one, it, bro. This is it. This yeah. is gonna uh, be the one that's gonna take off. Word. That's dope. Yeah. Yo, so talk about talk about yams a little bit. Um, you know, we kind of discussed uh, a couple of times, me and Pete, like where yams would be right now. If he was yeah. still around. What, what, what do you of... think he'd be on right now if he was? Because I can see like, where the gang went. You know, like man, you know, yo, know, it's crazy because um, I, I be feeling like that's why people be passing away early because we don't know where they will be. Like I, I can't really? put him in this era. I can't put games in this era. I feel like I don't know. I feel like he really served his purpose in the sense that I don't think he like, damn, if he was around, he'd be bigger. The nigga really did what he was supposed to do in that particular time, in that yeah. moment, bro. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Shit, man. So, I mean, I could just say the generic shit, like he was, you know what I'm saying? He would still be in the midst of everything. Like, do you he think he would be on dude. social media with his personality? Of course, because he was that big even back then. That's what I'm saying. Then. That's what I'm saying. But, yeah, but we see so, pictures. We see pictures, uh-huh. but we don't see a ton of video with him yapping. And you were talking about on your post, you're talking about his laugh and his personality and, and just what kind of guy he was, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Like definitely I, I would see him, he would definitely have like be be dipping and dabbing in, in probably like his own show. Right. Probably would have had a talk show, probably would have turned like Yo, bro, th- with him, it would have been like anything, you know what I'm saying? Because he was just that charismatic. Yeah, and he yeah. was just that intelligent. He was He's smart. A visionary, man. He really saw where you guys were going. Super, yeah. super visionary. And the, in the, he's the, when you think of visionary, man, like he's he's like the premier, bro, because yeah, it was just effortless, you know what I'm saying? How he used to put things together and just his attitude towards things, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it was just, it was no mind, meaning like, Nigga didn't right. really like think about it too hard. Like if it was hot, it was hot. If it was trash, it was trash. Right. You, you know felt it. Like, you just go with it, right? So it's is that you know that would have just been you know you know you gotta understand too. Like you know these times now too, I feel like it's getting a little bit more soft. And you know Yans was very yes hard and very with the even to his tweets was yeah. what I'm saying. So yeah. you know it it would it, it would have been interesting to see you know how he would have maneuvered during I mean he probably would have had a thousand jokes about the COVID shit man like, I'm it saying. Been we, we missed that personality you know what I mean yeah. was he was he an advocate for you when it came to the acting nah nah because I wasn't even doing the acting at that particular moment I don't think I even had I was even discussing acting at that that's a move for you that's a yeah I man you're doing well with this man yeah man for sure and and you know I, I only had, you know what I'm saying? We had a short period of time when we was, you know, when everything was kicking off and shit. So it was all about music, you know what I'm saying? When it was a, with, with us and just, when it wasn't about music, it was just about personal family shit and just, right. you know, thinking about life. But acting, I wasn't even thinking about, but that's why I kind of added a lot of acting elements in my early videos because mm-hmm. It was my way to show that I can act in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't have no avenue. I didn't know who to, like, I didn't have a casting director. I didn't have an agent. Because videos are a chance. Them. Yeah. Right. Right. So I, I had to use my, 
my channel, you know what I'm saying, and my outlet to um showcase that I can do acting too, because acting was something I always wanted to do to begin with, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Now, I, I, we talked about early on this, this Juice connection in Harlem, and I see some of the Tupac references in your music and the ideologies. Now, I always connected with New York Pac, but the way he went with his career and how the whole thing you know, evolved from there, is so, that someone that was a big influence on you? Yeah, you know, like, so, you know, like the first, first rapper I kind of like idolized and wanted to be like, and really was influenced by was Tupac, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, when you get older and you start seeing things differently and you start getting more mature, you start thinking like, I have a very, very, you know, bro, I have like a very weird stance when it comes to pop nowadays, bro. I believe because, that. because you know, like, I can now separate the antics and the music. At one point, it was together. Like, right. I used to love all that. Now right. I'm looking at that right. shit, and that shit was so destructive, right? Like, mm -hmm. you see how niggas like Biggie died behind that shit. Like, you see how right. Right. there was there was even the stories that they say, quote unquote. There was a after Pac got killed, there was like 12 people who died after. Like, right. right. So, right. so I don't. Uh, I appreciate Pac because of his courage and his heart. And his, mm -hmm. his, his, the cloth he's cut from, he's cut from that Black Panther. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, the dude's story is incredible, but he did a lot of damage, bro. And the a nigga was a real, yeah. And, and, you know, now, you know, now we, we, you know, the world we got for that is troll. Like, he would have been that, bro. No disrespect. They Listen, said that. I'm going to say something crazy, right? And, and, I, and I said this to Tito off the air. I was like, the, the, you see 6 9 and what he went through. But then you see Pac and what he went through. There's a lot. There's similarities in the company Holy. they the, the 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 company they kept. Now Pac went to jail and, and did his thing and whatever. And Six Nine chose that route. But the similarities in the antics, as you said, and and we were talking about it. You can see who the guy is now compared to when we were younger. We were just taken for what we were given when we were younger. Now right. we can read about it and we find our way through it. You know, bro. Like you know. People don't want to. People won't make that comparison because it, it would be like, "How dare you?" So but, disrespectful, but, it's but, terrible, but, right? But I mean, what I'm saying, like, truth is truth, bro. Spade is a spade. Like, six nine is like the the who is the most disrespectful nigga in Pac time? Pac. There was nobody more disrespectful. The most. The most. The nigga said. And one of the first lines and hit him up was, I fucked your bitch. Like, there's <laughs> Yo, no disrespect. The story about him approaching Nas in Queensbridge is the mind blowing. This so, is unbelievable. So, so, so let's go, let's go antics. Right. Of course, they the same type of nigga because they, they want problems. They want smoke. Fuck all you they niggas. They knew the game. So that, they knew the game. But, right. They were but angry. the reason why they won't make that comparison is because the the artistic value of Pac is way right. more higher than that beyond, kid, right? Beyond Pac's the best, like, and, like, and that's what kind of his story is a little bit more sadder. Not even more, it is sadder, Pac, because mm -hmm. this was a man who was truly gifted, yes. who was truly like just one of the best, like you said, like just everything, even his his talking points, his storytelling, awesome. live performance, but the antics, everything. his judgment the antics, got out clouded it was just too much it was too it was much too much man. you know what i'm saying so yeah, yeah, yeah. he would have been like yo bro if pop would have been a, at this time he probably would have been facing the same backlash as this kid right now because the social this, media is what lit it up and we didn't social, have that and, and 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 we live in a day and age like we agreed on that it's it's soft now niggas is soft niggas is like just soft you can't say nothing different. men can't even yes. be men no more no, you know it's, different. So, it's different so you know, but I, I, there's a there's of of course there's a whole bunch of similarity with those two people, and that's thank that's you, messed thank up. Thank you, Bodega Bams, and, and 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 I hated to say that because we were talking about it, and I was like, I don't know if I should say it, but there is, and if you do the research about who Pac was running with, and this ain't Vlad, I'm not getting into all that that depth of that. You could do the research on your own, but like, yo, I, I respect the guy, but I saw similarities, and and I'm thank you for bringing up how much you love him, but still being conflicted at some of the antics. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, because yo, bro, think about it. Man. Man, like, I don't care, I don't care who he is. I don't care what he's done. Yo, people die, if the stories is true, people die behind what you did. And some, and not telling the truth some ways too. You know what so I mean? So if, if people died, if there's people who, 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 who lost their lives behind this whole antic and this whole drama, 
Yo, bro, that shit is not respectable, bro. I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't care what you say. Like, we lost Biggie Smalls. And it's not fair to put blame on anybody, but that Biggie Smalls death was a tribute to what started with dumb niggas. You, with him much, and nah, the, all them real niggas. Real shit. Real shit. We, were, we were talking earlier, someone said, did the East Coast, West Coast beef kill Biggie and Tupac? I said, no, it killed Biggie, but Pac, his antics is what got him yeah, up. exactly. With all, with exactly. all, res with all respect, due to the music, the man, the legacy, and all that, we love to. Yo, bro, Pac was already, uh, already, Pac was already a wild dude. Like that's just added on to it. Pac was already shooting unarmed cops. Like he was already doing Family. wild. Shit. Yes, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, Pac was going. To, Pac already had been shot before. So Pac is it's a, it's it's not surprising how he was going because that's all he said in his music too. But Big was like, if you look at it like an innocent Boston and all this shit. Was Big like, was a nigga who he was falling back. Who got, and then you look at Big, never not once said his name on the record. No, nope. you know what I'm saying? Like never did none of that hit him who up. Shot shit. you was not about him. It was recorded. They saying who there. shot you was not you heard. Yeah, yeah I, I seen was. that. Recently so they I'm said saying, that. like an innocent dude just got dragged into this little mess and end up being a we what they call it. There's, there's a word, there's a um a sacrificial lamb, bro. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. We saw Funkmaster Flex like talking about it and being emotional on social media about it. But there's a lot of truth in uh, some of the deception of what kind of went down, man. Thank you for touching on that, man. Are you pumped up this weekend about watching uh, Raekwon and Ghostface? Is that your wave? Uh, nah, I'm not, I'm not really too pumped <laughs> up. Man. Thank you for nah. being honest, I'm saying. You know what I mean? Uh, not I mean, I seen 50 Cent says some. So some real shit. He was like, I thought verses was when everybody could be in the crib. Like, why are we still doing verses for? You know what I'm saying? Like people outside now, yeah. People outside. Um, why we why don't we do it outside or some shit? Um, nah, I'm not really too pumped about it, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean, there's no what, what is the you know, when I think about verses, I'm thinking about competition. The house. I'm thinking about you know, and not only that, I'm thinking about like yeah. You know, going half for head, like those right. are two homies, like what, what's right, that? right, brothers, really. Watch any of those at all, uh, at all. Did you watch any of the verses? Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw the Jeezy joint. I saw, that was great. That was great. I saw, I saw the um the RZA joint. Great. With, with, the, the DMX was great. I saw the DM. I didn't get to see the DMX joint. I saw great. a little bit. I saw little bits of um the Fab joint with Kiss. Okay. Um, and I, yo, Ray is my guy. Like I got mad love for Ray. That's what man, I'm Ray is like. Like a big homie, man. I call Ray uncle every time I see Ray. He's a good man, guy. That's very Ray good is, guy. Ray is one of the realest, like rap dudes, like old school True. OG, one of the realest dudes I ever ran across to this yeah. day was Ray Kwan. He's a great dude. He dude, dude is the type of person to link up with you 10, 15 years and keep the same energy and answer DMs and stuff. Like he's super, Wu guys, super. Wu Tang guys are great. Ray Kwan, shout out to Bobby and them. They're fantastic. One time, one time, one time Ray had had did a show, not a show, it was like a little party um in Lower East Side one year for his birthday. And I had pulled up and um they played on um, cream and um I was with the nigga and all that and he gave me the mic and I I I wrapped his whole verse of cream. You know what I'm saying? Like that was a moment for me, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm, I'm I'm over there hyping his shit up and nigga just passed me the mic, like hey that fool, and I'm like go crazy. What? So that was a moment. That there's dope. a video of that too. Somebody got that I, I know we're gonna pull that up. I need to see that. Yeah. Did you, yeah. you you get a chance to listen to this new thing that Benny the Butcher and Harry Fraud dropped today? Did you see what they're doing out there? This new nah, I seen, I seen, yeah, crazy. I seen crazy. um yeah, I seen um I seen online. Um shout out to them, you know what I'm saying? Like I I I'm not all the way tapped in though, but I I, I gotta tap in. Yeah, well you just put a project out too. Talk a little bit about El Camino and what this means to you at this stage of your career to be. Yo, you've been mad consistent. I don't I didn't see a lot of big features on this one. This is kind of you and your people. Production is like crazy production. Thank Talk you. about this album, man. Um, you know, what um I didn't want I didn't want no features on it because I wanted, excuse me, I wanted I want the focus to kind of like be on me. You know what I'm saying oh, yeah. like, oh yeah, and I wanted um people to really not be um enamored by like who's on it and whatever the case may be. Because I was treating this project as the way I came into this project, how I you know started writing on it, and working on it. I, I told myself, I said, if if I was to stop making music, like what it, what would my last album sound like? That's wow. what I thought in right, my head. Right, right, right. So so. 
during that process, while I'm thinking like that, I made the song El Camino. Mm -hmm. And that's why that song is the last song on that album. And if you hear it, it sounds like I'm just driving off in the sunset. Yeah. And it's over. Because yeah. that literally was the first song on the album. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like the first one you recorded, and it was the, the first one finale. I recorded was okay. that song. You know what I'm saying? So everything else came after. Um so I yeah, I, and, and honestly, bro, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I knew I knew the people was going to love it, man. I knew, especially my fans, I knew anybody who's going to listen to it, they was going to appreciate it, bro, because I'm big on that. I'm just big on quality. Like, it's I don't very bullshit. Very quality, bro. It's crazy. Yeah, man, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't BS with it, bro. Like, I'm not here to, you know, just to, to drop music, just to drop it. Like, I really right. treat this like, if, you know, if it's my last time, like, how would I sound? How would I be remembered and stuff right. like that? You know what I'm saying? So, and that's another thing. Again, you know, back to the features, like, you know, it, I, I, I wanted it to be a focus too. I remember like, I had a conversation years ago with somebody and they were telling me, they were like, yo, Ben's like, I want to see a video that is just you. You know what I'm saying? We love that, you know, you always showing the tan boys and we love Real that you always though. mobbing, but I want to see you, you know what I'm saying? And cause that was, I'm big on that, yo, how I came in this game, I came in with all my tan boys. Like yeah. we was mobbing <laughs> everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I remember, I remember. And then I realized, you know what I'm saying? Excuse me. I realized that um, what he said, it was kind of true. Like, like right. you know, you focus too much on everything else. You, you, you know what I'm saying? And you kind of get lost. People don't really know what's your personality. Like, who are you? 100%. And so that's, that's what I try to do. Not try, but that's what I've been doing moving forward. I've been trying to like, you know, focus just really on me, like posting pictures, just about me, nothing else. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, cause I, I'm gonna do that show a lot of love too. And I like to put people in positions and definitely. I'm gonna always be like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. you know, I want to focus on me. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. I, we've seen it and, and keep the quality up, man. Uh, shout out any producers that you're working with. The producers don't get enough shine these days. You shot your man earlier. Who else is on this project? You can give some um, love to. I got my homie, um, Navi Beats. Um, he's done a lot of stuff for, um, there's a, a, a rapper out of the Bronx, underground rapper, his name is Axel. Mm -hmm. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Navi Beats, I got a dude named Cass One out of California. Mm -hmm. Amazing dude. Um, mm -hmm. He did a record on the album called The Dawn in East and West. Uh, mm -hmm. Who else I got on this shit? I got, um, man, who's these? I got my man Bams Beats, he's from Miami. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, yo, I, yeah. I, I, I like to, I, I got like a selective, Produces that if I put them all in the same room, we all gonna be cohesive and we all gonna be together, right? Like, mm -hmm, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, that's another thing too. I'm big on just sounds and like one of my biggest, I guess, one of my biggest traits that I have, bro, is that I got a good ear for beats. You know what I'm saying? Like, Telling I'm you, big man. on that. You know I mean, I got a I good ear. Hear it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and cause I, oh, I like, you know, the, the, a lot of times, man, you know, rappers be picking a lot of whack ass beats, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's just be trash. Yo, they don't you know realize I mean? it's just more than their bars. It's just yeah, more man. for the listener, for the listener. You know what I mean? It like, is. yo, you know, that's, that's, you know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I'm I, glad that I got that kind of ear where yeah. I can taste it. You know what I'm saying? Like my ear has course, taste, you know what I'm saying? Of course. So, you know, you know, then I've worked with the huge producers. Like I've, I've done projects with Salam Remy, you know what I'm saying? So. Big. You know, I've done records with Alchemist, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. you know, I could bounce from here and there, you know what I mean? Like I could mm -hmm. do the big producers, I could do the, the, the independent coming up producers or whatever. I just like the build, man, you know what I'm saying? And whatever I hear, if I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I need it instantaneously. I'm also a dude that if I'm taking too long on a record, it just ain't worth it. Like I, I'll move on to right. the next job. So you write to the beat, you don't like kind of prepare, then go and- Nah, find something. I, I do both. So, okay. so usually I, I'm just always writing. So yep. I'm always writing, and then when I hear something, I try to match it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Sometimes I might sit down and 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 um and hear a beat and write and write to it. I never forget too, bro. Speaking of my man Nip, like man. I remember I seen him record, like when he first used to come out in New York, like yeah. And we used to be we so we used to cross the spot like on, in, in the Midtown or whatever. Anyways, the nigga would take like two weeks to finish a song. I, right? I heard, so, I heard it was like a process for him. Yo, it was crazy. So he so he would start on a song, we'd be in there for hours, and then he'll just get back to it like two weeks later and just do the same thing over and over. And like at, you know, I remember seeing that for that, what it was. And I remember 
people would be complaining about that. Like, you know, the engineers and shit like but that. Like, what's on. going on? Right, right. But now, looking back as an adult and seeing where his music went, like, that's genius. Like, that's that's how he wrote. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, this Took guy time, was a quality, man. quality yes. kind of music. You know what I'm saying? And that's why he sounded and he projected so much good music in that last run that he had before he passed, like, it all made sense, bro. Like, why he took so long to record music. You know what I'm the saying? The last like, time I saw hard, him, bro. I had him at the radio station, like, maybe about six months before he passed away. I've known him for about 10 years, and when the first thing I said to him when I saw him was, how long did it take you to pick the beats for Victory Lap? And he said, like, three years. Wow. He was going right. through the process because he just knew what he wanted. And he was like, now nah, I'm gonna find the, and I'm like, every beat is a clap, every song is great. And he was like, yeah, it took me three years to really pick it, doing verse and a hook, putting it away for like months. That's why when you hear stuff, it's halfway finished shit. Cause he has it all Crazy. over the place. No, Crazy. Th- Crazy. Rest in peace, man. And th- that seemed to have touched you, his passing really, uh, that touched you, man. Yeah, for sure. Because I knew the nigga personally, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, and, right. I, and I knew, and I, I, and I feel good about that. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't like buddy, buddy. We wasn't speaking every single day, but I, I, I knew the nigga enough that if my name was brought up, you know, what I'm saying like nigga would talk about it. You know, what I'm saying that's fire to me. That that you know, I'm, I'm some way apart. Like I've been a part of, like I've crossed the paths of a lot of legendary dudes, bro. Like you brought up Yans, you brought up Nick. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm happy that I'm able to like, I'm even Chinks. Like I've crossed right. a lot of dudes' right. paths that, that. I knew these niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was love. It wasn't like on some like who that. Like, no, we had a relationship. Because you guys were coming up together. It was real, yes. And with Nip, and with Nip too, again, like, you know, I remember my, I remember he had a show in New York and he was doing the signing and somebody had, he was, they were asking him like, yo, you are you tapped into any new music that's out right now? And at that particular time, I had just dropped an album. I forgot what album it was. Right. And they had brought me up. And he was like, oh, Bodega, that's my man. Like, right. I used to come to New York back in the day when he was always here. So, that feels good, bro, when they you know, say and, it. And you know, like, like it's ill. Like, again, like, I, I, that makes me feel like, again, like, you know, when, when you when you great, you attract greatness. So the fact that I was even around, even if it was for a split second, if I was around this man, that shows me that I'm great as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm not going to be... I'm not, if I'm not great, why would I be around great people? You know what I'm saying? Like, this doesn't make sense. So, you know, I'm glad I was, I, I'm glad I got to meet these legendary dudes. It's a man. special so feeling, man. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm a couple years older than you. And I started, uh, you know, really connecting with guys like Nip and, and J. Cole and Big Sean and those guys when they were coming up and to see where these guys have gone in the last 15 years. And, and most of them are easy to reconnect with guys like Wiz Khalifa and them. But Nipsey Hustle was somebody super special because I just kind of knew uh, yo, he, he wasn't really destined for this. He pushed for it. He really worked. He was smart and he was right on the edge. Me and Tito were saying the closest thing that we saw in our generation of this generation to Biggie was Nipsey because he passed right before he was about to go crazy. Mm. Be a big success. We we felt it. We seen it, but he, did he feel it? Remember when, if Big was around for hypnotized, imagine, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, rest, man. In, rest in peace to Nipsey Hustle, man. He was a fantastic, fantastic dude, man. Word up. Word Yo, up. Thank you for stopping by today and, and telling some stories, my man. I like this vibe, man. Come on, nah, bro. Love, love is love, man. You know, one day I'm gonna write a book, bro. You need to. You need to. Man. I got I because I got a bunch of I got a bunch of nuggets. I got a bunch of Hell gems. Yeah. I got a yo, man. Like I I I I've um again, man, I built my shit up to a point where you know what I'm saying, like. You know, like I've been around, bro. Like this journey's been crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like I've seen a lot of things. I've been Dude. I've been a fly on the wall for a lot of situations. I've been I've been in the I've been in the room and there's been a fly on the wall for me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been able to maneuver, bro. Like I've seen a lot, I've seen a lot, especially in New York, man. Like, you know, I'm I'm happy that, you know, I I, I in some way, shape, or form I've cemented myself in this New York culture. Like I big time. I, you know, bro. I, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've contributed to the hip hop culture. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? To contribute, you know what I mean? And to contribute in a way that people know and there ain't no denying it. You know what I'm saying? And you know, this game, nigga, this game is, is it taught me a lot. It showed me a lot. It showed me, this this game has shown me a side that I was never prepared for. You know what I'm saying? Because I came in this shit with, um, I came in this shit thinking that everything is going to be, like, I came in this shit thinking that as soon as you got in it, a certain shit was going to happen. 
everybody going to be cool. And this shit opened my eyes to a lot of shit, bro. You know what Does it saying? feel like you think it would feel? It's, it's hell not, no, you don't like a ride. No. Don't, all of a sudden, you don't change. It's kind of like the people around you kind of shift a little bit and they start acting weird. But really, you're the same person from the grind. You're the same yeah, person. It's, 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 you know, it's different when, you know, it's different when, um, when you consider yourself with a heart, when you got a heart, bro, it's, it's, it's difficult to maneuver mm -hmm. in this business because this business is heartless and it's cold. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know what I mean? Again, it, 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 it shapes you into being something that you have to, it, you gotta have to make a choice. Like, you know, I couldn't be this way, but I also have to be that way to play the game. Cause you gotta play this game, bro. This game's gonna to. be here. Yep. Even when you're not, this game is gonna be here. You know what I'm saying? Right. So this, you know, it taught me a lot. Um, but during the process, I've accomplished a lot, you know what I'm saying? And Hell yeah, and I'm appreciative for that, you know what I mean? Definitely, man. Good luck with the acting stuff. The music is out. El Camino is amazing. Please. Yo, and shout out to Boston, man. I, feel, I, I like Boston a lot, man. Yeah, I man. I like Boston a lot. You do shows up there? You went to the Middle East? You did stuff in Hell Canada? Hell yeah. Hell shout out yeah. to Leeds, man. East. Yeah, yeah, Leeds. I went to the Middle East. I went Boy, to the uh, Frank, Frank the Butcher. That's my, that's my dude. Home. Yes, that's our brother, man. Dude. We know Frankie. Yeah, Shout Frank to Frank. the Butcher is my dude, man. Frank the Butcher um plugged me in with a big Reebok campaign like two years ago. It was, it was incredible. Great. Um, man, grew up in the same city together. That's my dude. Frank is my guy. Guy, great man. Um, yeah, but I like Boston. Even before I became a rapper and, and started traveling, like I was a Boston Red Sox fan. Like. Mm -hmm. I was a Babe Ruth fan. I'm a Pedro Martinez fan. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, hell yeah, Poppy and them. Yo, you see, you see uh, LeBron? You seen LeBron bought the team, part of, bought, bought a piece of the team? I saw that. That's fire. That's fire. Great. Right. We need that. That's fire. Yeah. yeah. I've always been a, you know what I'm saying? I don't I've know. Always, always, <laughs> been, a, always, always been a, even, even, um, even, um, like, I've always wanted to go to Fenway. Like, I just always been to Ooh. Boston. For some reason, Boston always drove me. I like the agriculture yeah. over there. Yeah. I like how, you know, the, 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 the streets are like, even when I go down, I remember I was filming, I was filming um, cause the show I was on, it was called Smilf. And yep. first season we shot in LA, but second season we shot in location. The show was based in Boston. So, oh, you know, word. it was close to me. So we shot in Boston a lot for the second season. And I was in, um, I was in one of these areas. What town, was, you know the town? Um, It was like a lot of Irish people downtown. Of like, course, it was, yeah, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> That's but, everywhere. <laughs> so, so, so I asked them. I was in the area when I and I asked them about Whitey. I was asking the driver because it was the driver taking us from the yeah from my set to the um right. trailer, whatever. And I asked them about like Whitey Bolger. I'm like, yo, where's Whitey Bolger from? Like, what area is Whitey Bolger? Southie, from? man. Southie. See, that's where I was at. I was in Southie. Yeah, that's a fact. I was yeah. around there. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, man. He was like, this is where whatever. That's a good like, accent too. Like, yeah, right over here, dude. You yeah, yeah. Like, he was like. <laughs> We're the Hill Gang and all that. I was like, yeah, that's the hell? Yeah, 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 yeah. Real yeah. shit. Now, now we know we know a couple of guys who used to Boston, run around. I got you. Oh, you want to come to Fenway? I got you. I'm gonna take the plug. So don't. I got, fire, I got fire. You. He get you right behind home plate, man. He got you, man. Don't worry. Oh, fire! Need that, bro. Need that. Yo, I, I need to go. You know, cause you know Fenway is still like one of the oldest parks, bro. Like the I need best. to. You never been? Never been. I grew up at Fenway. Are you kidding me? Oh my God, uh, man. Tell you the dopest experience. Hold, Hold on, on, talk, talk to him. I'm gonna get a picture. Talk to him. Hold on, to you. Go come, ahead. Come, come fuck with me. Honestly, I, I'm the ticket plug, bro. I got you. You want to come up go to Fenway? We'll do it. Let's we'll do it. Nah, fire! I, hell yeah, hell yeah, I, bro. I got access to that whole building. So wherever you want to go, we'll go up on the, the monster. We'll go. Woo! Yo, damn, be nice. So, yo, when we see the start in April, right? Yeah, it's supposed to start in April. I, yo, they, they fucked up, though, because they only doing 12% capacity until, like, June. So once the summer starts popping, like, once it gets a little bit warmer, I think that, you know, this whole COVID bullshit is crazy. Damn, look man. at this. Look at this. This is me and my pops at Fenway in, like, 1981. Wow. Son, we're at the game hanging out. L little boy, bro. I bet this, I got this on my wall in my room. Look at the little kid. That's fire. We gotta get you Yo, out there, man. You there? What are you looking four, for? Four years old. Word? They used to, to. Four, four. Wow. So you know, we, we got you. We got you. No worries. We'll nah, yeah, yeah. Yo, bro, when they get when they get when they get someone like you said, doing all that, man, just that gotta tell me to pull up. I'll pull up, bro. I, you know what I'm saying? Like I go to Boston, bro. Like yeah. it ain't it ain't an issue, bro. Come out. 
I'll tell yeah. Frank to come through. Yo, it'll be dope. Yeah, you got it. Right, you yo, that, up there, man. Come on. Yo, bro, that'll be a boyhood dream come true, bro. Yo, I so got you, bro. That's done. Look, now, I'm going to hold him to it, Bams. I'm going to be like, Tito, you better look out for Bams. Let's go. Fire, fire. Yo, that's it. We're going to wrap it up today. Bodega Bams, new album out now. He's a Red Sox fan. We fuck with him for life. Heavy hitters we hear. It's the Mr. Peter Parker podcast, the God Tito Jackson, Harlem, and we will, hopefully we get get him in the movie soon. You know what I mean? Like, let's go, my guy.